being in another country and waiting to get a call from a loved one who's been traveling for weeks or months to hear if they've arrived at their destination safely and then to see the news of this tragedy here in Bear County instead. We are not certain of all the countries where the victims are from, but I have spoken with the Walamanan Consul General and they are working to get information from the hospitals for their citizens. We're also working with the consulates of Mexico, Honduras, and El Salvador. If you have a family member that you fear could be one of the victims, you can call the Guatemalan Consulate at 956-800-7351. No estamos seguros de que de qué países son todas las víctimas, pero he hablado con el Consul General guatemalteco y están en el proceso de obtener información de los hospitales sobre las víctimas. Si usted tiene un familiar que tal vez sea una de las víctimas, puede llamar el consulado guatemalteco al número 956-800-7351. Gracias. Después podemos hablar más. Well, thank you. The inscription on our Statue of Liberty says, give me your tired, your poor, and your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. And our nation was built on the backs of poor immigrants and made us a great nation today. Today, we mourn for those 51 immigrants who came to us to breathe that fresh air, but instead found death in the state of Texas, suffering in a van or trailer from heat exhaustion. It's a terrible way for us to treat immigrants. The state of Texas has done just about everything wrong that I can think of. They participate in building a wall which does nothing to protect our border. They have spent billions of our taxpayers' dollars, state taxpayers' dollars, on paying for the Texas National Guard at the border. And they throw innocent people, those that just lost their lives, just like them, they throw them in converted prisons down by the border. We dehumanize them. We make them, people think that there's something less than us and they are not less than us. Instead of spending Texas dollars on a failed body security program, we should instead be using those funds to help immigrants. Spend those funds to catch the smugglers and the crooks that live right here in Texas that did what they did today. State should be spending dollars helping the immigration courts to help them move those cases along so they can decide their state here, their status here. And they should be participating with the Mexican border states and providing funding for them so that they can provide shelter and food for the immigrants that are coming through Mexico. And most of all, our state leaders should be supporting immigration reform until the Congress enacts a comprehensive immigration reform that's fair to people, that gives the people for the great opportunity they're looking for. We're going to continue to see this horrible, horrible policy instituted by the state of Texas and complemented by the federal government. We mourn for them. I'm so, so pleased what the University Hospital has done. George Hernandez and his team, Sutherland Springs massacre, Uvalde mass shooting of innocent 19 children and two teachers, and now 51 people dying here in Bear County as they come across the water. A medical examiner, as Rebecca stated, has received all the bodies from Uvalde and now she's facing this tremendous workload, tremendous. I can't imagine how they go through that in the job that they do. Also want to thank the Bear County Emergency Services for being out there on site and for Bear County Sheriff um, uh, Javier Salazar for his attention to the problem we've got out there. So we should mourn, we should not forget, 
but we should try to correct the horrible mistakes this state's making and our nation's making. We're going to take a few questions. We're going to go around. My name is Tom Pina. I'm an assistant public information officer. So we want to make sure that we get everybody in. So if you have some questions, we want to make sure that you understand we cannot talk about anything that has to do with the investigation. The investigation is handled by the Department of Homeland Security, and we most certainly uh, want to make sure that uh, they, they can talk about uh, what they need to talk about. But if you have any questions with respect to the medical examiner's office or what the county does, then now would be a good time. Yes, sir. There are currently 51 bodies uh, in the custody of the medical examiner. There are uh, 39 of them are men, 12 of them are women. Children? So they're potentially some of them are under the age of 18, but we have to ask you to understand that what we have in materials there to try and identify the individuals cannot be at this time perfectly matched to the individuals, right? So that is what the medical examiner is trying to do, hence uh, my saying these are potentially people under 18. But not, I would say in the, te in the, in the teenage age range, not younger. I'm sorry? I don't have a number. I don't have a number. You can they're all related deaths. No, I cannot. That is what, so the medical examiner and the medical examiner's office, their job is to determine the cause and the manner of death. And these investigations and to identify the victims. These, uh, this work will take days, if not longer, because you may imagine there's 51 victims, and we want to be very diligent in this work uh, and respectful to them. How many? It's Alejandra, personally with the division, has been talking to family members, especially Guatemala. They're not getting any response from the consulate, and a lot of them think that their family members are here in the hospital. They speak their native language, and they're only speaking to us. They're desperate. They don't know what to do. What are we going to do with all these families? Well, I've been in communication with the Wallamon and Consulate. They've actually been very gracious. And, okay, but this is su su pregunta en inglés, por eso. Um, so I'll answer in English since your question was in English, and then I'll go to Spanish. So I've been in contact with the Wallamon and Consulate. They've been very gracious. I gave out the number. You can let me know if I need to give that out again. They are also working with the hospitals to get information. They are also limited because of HIPAA rules. So they are working with that. Yo he estado en comunicación con el cónsul general guatemalteco. Um, están tratando de coger información de los hospitales para sus paisanos. Um, el número que ustedes pueden llamar, que directamente me lo dio, porque yo les dije que iba a venir aquí para hacer conferencia de prensa, es 956-800-7351. Y ellos pueden hablar de la situación y están tratando de, de ayudar a sus paisanos. Rebeca Clay Flores, comisionada del condado, presento uno. Rebeca, usted habló al principio sobre la, la situación que han encontrado ustedes como hospital. ¿Podría describir en español esta situación tan difícil para ustedes? Perdón. La situación de encontrar tantos cuerpos en un solo momento, de lo difícil que ha sido para el personal médico. Pues, obvio, es algo impactante. O sea, son profesionales que le entrenan cómo hacer estas cosas, pero cuando uno um, encuentra tantos cuerpos al mismo tiempo en la situación, pues obvio que es algo que, que impacta muy fuerte. Entonces, algo muy triste. Nosotros aquí en Bear County, en el condado de Bear, estamos trabajando para hacer um, el máximo que nosotros podemos hacer. Obvio que tantas personas, diferentes países, no saben toda la identificación. Es algo difícil. Entonces, pedimos su paciencia porque todos están trabajando um, el máximo que pueden trabajar. ¿Y usted dijo algo sobre el gobernador y su reacción inicial cuando recién todavía estaban recogiendo los cuerpos? ¿Qué dijo el gobernador? El gobernador siempre juega el político, aunque mucho de ese falta es, pues, es su culpa, ¿no?
Um, the question is, how long do they think they'll be able to give bodies to the families to send them back to their countries? Uh, as I try to explain, the, uh, the pro this process will take time because the medical examiner wants to be diligent. So right now, we can only estimate, uh, as you may imagine, 51 victims. So it'll take at least several days, if not longer than that. And then the information or their findings will have to be given to the consulates, and then the consulates will take it from there. It is very difficult, if not impossible, right now to answer your question. I understand that people are desperate to know, but at the same time, it, it is more complicated because these are potentially citizens from other countries and the process is more complex. I don't believe have any hospital I don't have any hospital numbers. I don't know if anybody else does. How many kids We have the information here at UHS. So we just have this local information, not not the other hospitals. Obviamente pueden entender que va a tomar mucho tiempo. Ahorita no podemos dar una fecha, unos días para decir cuánto tiempo va a tardar, porque el proceso, proceso es muy complicado porque estamos trabajando con muchos países, como ya dije, que de hecho tampoco sabemos todos los países de dónde vienen los víctimas. Pues es el número que me dieron. Después de la conferencia, podemos, yo puedo hablar con usted, puedo hablar en general, porque pues no es justo que doy su número celular. Ahorita podemos hablar con él y le podemos preguntar, con mucho gusto. Porque estamos aquí para dar la información para los uh, familiares, para los pasanos. No estamos aquí para, para no tener esa información. Perdón. Claro, claro. Do you want to speak to that? En español. Ay, usted habla español. Claro, este, puedo hablar de UHS. Y como yo dije, cuando visité, están dando el excelente um, cuidado con los pacientes. Los um, enfermeros son muy, muy amables. Y de hecho, este, vi personalmente que la, la señorita que tiene 23 años ya está mejor. Um, entonces la otra persona, pues estamos pidiendo muchas oraciones. Pero sí, están, they, they have the best extra care. Yeah, she was just asking about the kind of care that they're giving. I can obviously speak for UHS because it is our county hospital and they are getting excellent care. Um, the young woman who's 23 year old that I visited with this morning for Guatemala, um, I can personally say that her condition has gotten better. She is better. She was able to speak to me, um, and the UHS staff is giving excellent, excellent care. I would say the teenage boy, um, personally, we are asking for prayers for him. So we can only speak about the patients we have here at UHS. We don't have the information. As you can imagine, um, they went out critical care to the hospitals that had the beds. Um, and so STRAC has organized that and um, different hospitals have, yeah, you can ask STRAC. Different hospitals are privatized and different things and there's a lot of HIPAA laws that we're trying to protect. Is there anything you're asking of state and federal leaders to prevent this happening again? Do you want to speak to that? Anything we're asking state and federal leaders? I mean, I can give you my personal opinion. People need to get registered to vote and vote for a governor of Texas who cares about people. Period. That's what I think we need to do. Register and vote. Que nosotros tenemos que votar, registrar para votar. Hay muchos latinos que pueden registrar y no lo han hecho. Y yo te pregunto por qué. Tenemos tragedias como esto y luego quieren culpar a algo, quieren gritar. Pues registra y voto. Votan para políticos, para un gobernador que de veras merece ser el gobernador de este, de este gran estado de Texas. I, 
I don't know. That is something that federal authorities decide, and you would have to ask them. Yeah, the, so the important part there is, uh, as Commissioner Clay Flores said earlier, they need to contact the consulates, their consulate, so that the consulate can then talk to our medical examiner's office, and then we can relay information that way. For the adolescent who is uh, at this hospital, has any guardian been identified either among the dead or among any of the other patients? No. 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 Nope. No, that is not the case. I'm sorry, I, I, we don't have that information. He was unaccompanied family, so we don't have Oh, yeah, we, we don't have that information available, if they were by themselves or not. Yeah, ma'am, the problem is you're asking us questions that we can't answer because this is something that lies within federal authority, not within the authority of the county. So I'm sorry, but we don't, I just don't have that information. Can I ask for your Can you rephrase your question, please? Uh, do you think these uh, migrants that are victims of this tragedy, should they be given asylum or should they be protected from the United States? Yeah, should they, she's asking if the people that arrive here, they should be given asylum. Because this has happened not just once, but more Let me tell you, I don't trust the state of Texas on any of dealing with immigrants. Nationwide, the federal government, they are protected. I can't tell you what some state official will do. They've passed so many laws that try to discriminate against immigrants. We have millions of immigrants living here. They're undocumented. That don't mean they're here illegal. But they're afraid to speak up, not just because of this issue. So I have no confidence in what the state of Texas might do. When they're putting innocent people in a, uh, a, a, a prison, uh, how can we have any confidence that they would do anything right? But the federal government will. Okay, if we don't have any more questions, then that will conclude today's press conference. Thank you. Can I give individual questions? Yeah. Okay. So I'm sorry, was that in English and Spanish? I don't even remember. Ese, a su pregunta otra vez de cuántos personas.